right now on 18 Eyewitness News. Health care changes could affect the St. Francis County Ambulance District. We'll let you know how. Also, a man was found dead over the weekend in the Mississippi River. How long the police said the man had been there? We'll find out. And East Missouri Action Agency gets more funding for mammograms. All of these stories are coming up. Some changes in season for Southeast Missouri weather. All the latest weather information coming up. 18 Eyewitness News starts now. Hello everybody, I'm Fred Dawkins. Thanks for joining us. Here's the top stories that we are working on for you at this hour. Recent changes to Medicare and Medicaid reimbursements could take away about 2 to 3 percent from current reimbursements to the St. Francis County Ambulance District. St. Francis County Ambulance District Director David Tetro tells 18 Eyewitness News how this will affect the district annually. The president and the government are going to cut about $2.1 trillion from the health care budget. So when you look at that in Medicare Medicaid, just in the ambulance service alone, generally that's going to be about 2% of what we get in Medicare Medicaid funding. So it's going to affect us about $60,000 annually so far. David did point out that right now it appears to be about $60,000 annually and will be cut. But the future, it's hard to tell as it depends on the population of the community and if they carry Medicare or Medicaid insurance. Insurance. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you the latest new developments as they come about. Now we want to hear from you. Do you think it's okay for the government to cut this much money from the ambulance district? Voice your opinion at our poll at kdkz18.com. Now Dustin Kopp is here with a look at our first forecast. Dustin. Good evening, Fred. Good evening, everybody. Temperatures at the 6 o'clock hour, not bad at all. St. Genevieve right now at 74 degrees. Fredertown, 74. Off to our south and, and the east, 73 in Cape Girardeau and 73 right now in Ironton. Going through the evening hours this evening, we'll be seeing not a bad evening at all. 7 p.m. temperature, 74 degrees. Mostly sunny skies. Clear skies remain overnight. Temperature of 70 degrees at 9 p.m. And by midnight, 66 degrees. Now let's check out your first forecast. More details on your weather that... Could be a little on the roller coaster side. All the details coming up in just a little bit. 41 year old Alan Thompson of Farmington pleaded guilty in March to aggravated cruelty to animals. He could have gone to prison for up to three years. However, a judge in Peoria gave him 30 months of probation and ordered him to pay $600 in restitution after he threw his girlfriend's pet chihuahua against a wall and killed it. Judge Kevin Lyons took into account letters from Thompson's family saying that he had stopped taking medication for bipolar disorder when he moved to Illinois to live with his girlfriend. Now, according to court records, Thompson became angry when the dog named Beep Beep refused to come out from under a bed. 41-year-old Christopher Shoemake of Fredericktown has entered a guilty plea to one felony count of attempt to manufacture methamphetamine. Shoemake now faces a maximum of 20 years in prison and a $1 million fine with the court imposing a period of supervised release of at least three years. Shoemake's sentencing date has been set for July 15th in Cape Girardeau. On January 27th of this year, SEMO Drug Task Force officers apprehended him in the process of manufacturing methamphetamine at a location near Piedmont in Wayne County. An investigation continues after a towboat operator found a male's body just south of the Missouri dry dock in the river. Cape Girardeau County Coroner John Clifton says that the body appears to have been in the river for several days and it appears that the person drowned. The body has been identified, however police have not released the name pending next of kin being notified. When we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, East Missouri Action Agency gets more funding for mammograms. That story coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. For 15 years, Heartland Furniture and Appliance has been the leader in price for restonic bedding. Whirlpool built Crossley Appliances, Frigidaire Appliances, Sofa Sets, Recliners, Accent Furniture, and White's Metal Detectors. Same day delivery with no waiting. We are fast becoming this area's leader in the home furnishing and appliance business. Need a little cash? Payday loans are available in each store. We'd love to have you come see us at one of our three locations. On both sides of Main Street in Piedmont, Business 60 in Dexter, and next to Current River Ford in Donovan. Heartland Furniture and Appliance, 223-3200. Let it wash 
How can heat also be cool? When it comes from targeted induction technology, which uses electromagnetic waves to quick heat your pan, boiling up to 40% faster, while the surface around it stays perfectly cool to the touch. It's faster, hotter, and, well, cooler. Hi, Bob Seaball at Seaball Furniture and Appliance. Come and see this and other great features and benefits that will amaze you. Now on sale at Seaball Furniture and Appliance in downtown Fredericktown. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Dustin Kopp. 18 Eyewitness News continues. The Susan G. Coleman St. Louis affiliate has informed the East Missouri Action Agency's Women's Wellness Center that it will receive another year of funding for the Rural Missouri Outreach Project. Coleman Breast Navigator Angela Eaton tells 18 Eyewitness News what this means. The Susan G. Komen St. Louis affiliate has funded East Missouri Action Agency to provide at least 400 screening mammograms. In addition to that, we have money for diagnostic mammograms and ultrasounds for women who have problems. The screenings are available to residents in St. Francis, Jefferson, Washington, St. Genevieve, Madison, and Perry counties. For more information or to see if you qualify, visit our website, kdkz18.com. 50-year-old George Watson of Wapapello has died from his injury sustained in an accident last Friday that occurred on Route T at the Wapapello Dam. Watson was taken by ambulance to Poplar Bluff Regional Medical Center. He was not wearing a seatbelt when the accident occurred. Crash investigators say Watson's Ford Ranger was eastbound and crossed the center line and hit a pickup truck head-on. The other driver in the accident was not injured. One adult male is dead and five other adults were injured after being struck by a car late Sunday afternoon in Sykeston. The incident occurred around 5.15 Sunday afternoon outside a home on Southwest Street. Sykeston police say there were an altercation at the family's gathering and the suspect was asked to leave. The suspect got into a car, backed up and drove forward. The car struck and injured several people, killing one of them. Three children were also injured in the incident, one being in serious condition. Two other people were listed in serious condition, and one person had moderate injuries. The suspect is currently in custody. Still to come on 18 Eyewitness News, a new elephant has been born at the St. Louis Zoo, and Governor Nixon made out pretty well in his last campaign. These stories and more in Missouri Headlines coming up. When someone comes in a mineral area's emergency department, our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. extended hours? Let the UPS store pack and ship your gifts. Hi, I'm Steve from the UPS store in Farmington, Missouri. Me and my staff would like to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.
St. Louis Zoo officials are describing a 251-pound newborn as petite. The 38 inches tall elephant is smaller than one of her siblings. The elephant's 42-year-old mother, Ellie, gave birth late Friday after a two-year pregnancy. The calf was up nursing within minutes. She spent her first hours eating and sleeping. With her arrival, the zoo's elephant herd is now up to 10. The calf isn't on view yet. Eventually, the zoo plans to hold a contest to name her. Two men led law enforcement officers on a chase that spanned several counties in two states before the getaway vehicle got stuck in the mud in northeast Kansas. The Kansas Highway Patrol was called to help in the chase that began in Buchanan County, Missouri. The suspects were wanted for stolen vehicles and weapons charges. The chase went through Atchison and west to Brown County, then on to Nemaira County in Kansas, where the suspects were taken into custody. Police say the passenger jumped from the vehicle about a mile from where it was stopped and was found in a ravine in a field about 700 yards north of the road. Both Jacob Abney, shown on the left, and Trenton Wiseman, shown on your right, are facing several charges, including possession of stolen property. A St. Louis-based rental car company has announced a $2 million gift to the University of Missouri. The donation from Enterprise Holdings Foundation, the philanthropic arm of St. Louis-based Enterprise Car Rental Company, will fund research related to biofuels, biomass, and energy efficiency. The money will be used to create an endowment to support the work of the school's sustainable energy initiative. And Missouri Governor Jay Nixon made more than $200,000 of profit on his inaugural celebration. And although he can't seek re-election, plans are to keep the surplus money in a political committee to spend during his second term in office. Nixon's, Nixon's campaign committee spent about $156,000 on such things as hotel event space, invitations, and food. Nixon's most recent finance report filed with the Missouri Ethics Commission shows he took in about $389,000 in cash from contributors from December through February, much of which his campaign manager says was related to the inaugural festivities in January. Here is your Storm Tracker forecast. And welcome back. Currently, right now, we have a mostly sunny sky out there. It feels like 76, and that's our current temperature. Current dew point 56, humidity at 50% with the south wind at 13 miles per hour. Throughout the area here in southeast Missouri, not bad at all. 74 in St. Genevieve, 74 in Fredertown, Cape Girardeau, 73 and 75 in Piedmont. Heading out and about throughout the state, though, we're still on the warm side. We've got a warm sector of air over to the northern portions of Missouri. The southern portion's a little bit cooler in the 70s. So here's what our weather headlines look like throughout southeast Missouri for the next few days. We're going to see warm and sunny skies, rain for the end of the week. It looks like cooler air is going to be moving in. So here's our setup for your uh, Tuesday. We are going to see plenty of sunshine throughout southeast Missouri. Not a bad day at all. We're going to see nice weather for the next couple of days. Then we got some changes on the way. So our forecast for tonight, 55 to 60 degrees for your overnight lows. Mostly clear skies, west wind 10 to 15. Then for tomorrow, we'll see that mostly sunny sky, 82 to 86 for your daytime highs. South wind 10 to 15, gusting at 25 at times. And the next several days look like this throughout southeast Missouri. On your Tuesday, we'll see a mostly sunny sky. Feels like or temperature around 82 degrees, 80 and mostly sunny on your Wednesday. Rain for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 62 on Thursday, 52 on Friday, Saturday, 58, 59 on Sunday, and some thunderstorms in the area on your Monday with a temperature around 66. Your health is brought to you by Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. If you or a loved one has been implanted with a pelvic mesh, commonly called a bladder sling, you may be entitled to a significant cash award. Many women implanted with this device have suffered discomfort, excruciating pain, and even incontinence. The FDA has even warned that pelvic meshes may cause serious injuries, including pain, scarring, infection, incontinence, and discomfort. If you or a loved one has been implanted with a pelvic mesh, Call the Rely On Group at 800-796-6986. Coming up in today's Your Life segment on 18 Eyewitness News, Dr. Bill Meyer gives single mothers tips on how to raise their sons. 
I'm Stacy Johnson. You know, Mother's Day is right around the corner. Think mom could dig one of these things? Let's talk about some bad Mother's Day gifts. They're just ahead on Money Talks News. Recent news headlines have highlighted the latest research showing that, yes, boys are different than girls, but that's not news to most parents. Mothers raising sons alone in particular know they've got their hands full. Dr. Bill Meyer is here now with some ideas on handling those men in training. He's a very typical boy. His interests are building and he will build all over my house, all over the outside. Nine-year-old Creston Jones is definitely all boy. His mother, Janice, is well aware that as a single mom, she might not be equipped to meet all his needs. I know I've had to call my brother and he explains to me how a male thinks so I know what, what to expect with my son or, you know, because I'm thinking that he should be one way and that's just not the way males are. We used to have his bed built up high so that he could build underneath his bed. If we are really a half of two parents, we may have to take a role that's not the most comfortable for us, but the role that's best for the child. Mom should realize that it's normal for little boys to be aggressive and boisterous at times. Emerging masculinity can be quite a force to reckon with. Mothers should look for ways to channel their son's energy into competitive or constructive activity. It's important for her to encourage that, either through um, some kind of sport, um, some kind of coach, a mentor perhaps, uh, getting him involved in things that maybe are more masculine that she might not relate to as well. I, th I think that's the main thing, you know, just just understanding the differences and how he's wired differently. And he's the type of learner that does learning by doing, you know, so he's very active. And when you're worn out by that rambunctious little boy, just remember that all that energy may lead to great things in the future. History shows that many successful leaders began as headstrong little guys who gave their parents lots of headaches. For Focus on the Family, I'm Dr. Bill Meyer. Dr. Meyer encourages all mothers of sons, whether they're single or married, to keep that long-term perspective in mind. For more valuable information on life's issues, relationships, and family, visit our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the Focus on the Family link. Mother's Day is meant to honor and celebrate moms everywhere. Having trouble choosing a gift, money expert Stacy Johnson shows us some things mom probably doesn't want. Hey mom, what would you not want for Mother's Day? Something to wash with. <laughs> A really smelly perfume. Household appliance, it's probably a common thing to say, but it's true. You know, they say it's the thought that counts. So how about putting a little thought into what does count? A good gift for your mom this Mother's Day. Let's start your shopping experience by telling you what mom probably doesn't want to get. First, vacuums or other cleaning equipment. Reminding her she's a maid? Not a great idea. Same goes for number two, cooking appliances and utensils. In fact, unless she specifically asks for it, just skip anything that plugs in. Worse yet, number three, gym memberships or anything suggesting she needs to lose weight. Oh, and don't buy something for yourself and pretend it's for your mom. Your mom's gonna know she's your mom. Next, animals. Another mouth to feed and clean up after doesn't scream Mother's Day. And unless she asks for one, a gift card. They don't take any thought. Bottom line, don't be a dummy. Your mom's taking care of you. Now it's time for you to take care of her. So what's the worst Mother's Day gift you've ever given or gotten? Confess on our website and you could win a Money Talks News t-shirt. Just go to moneytalksnews.com and do a search for Mother's Day. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. As Stacy said, he's got more information and links at his website. To get there, just go to our website, kdkz18.com. Click on the Money Talks link under the Lifestyles menu. And coming up in sports, the Cards lose big time in Sunday's game. The Western Conference games have been announced, and the Royals win one and lose one. Sports is next. Tips to make you money delivered daily. The totally free Money Talks newsletter. Sign up now and get my money makeover video, a $50 value, as my gift. MoneyTalksNews.com Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. 
Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call one. This is Sports Zone. Pittsburgh's Garrett Jones had three hits, and Russell Martin hit two homers on Sunday to end rookie Shelby Miller's streak of 14 scoreless innings at home to start the season. The Pirates have won 9 of 12 overall and had the division lead for the first time since July 8th leapfrogging the Cardinals for first place by a half a game. Rookie Jeff Locke held the Cardinals to three hits in two walks over seven innings and has now worked 13 scoreless innings while allowing five hits in his last two starts. The Pirates beat the Cardinals 9-0. Jaden Schwartz set the tone with his first two-goal game of his NHL career. Brian Elliott stopped 22 shots to give him a franchise-best 11 wins in the month of April, and David Bax aided a pair of assists to give him 300 career points as the Blues beat the Chicago Blackhawks on Saturday night to clinch fourth place in the Western Conference. The win will set up a rematch with the Los Angeles Kings, who swept the Blues in the playoffs last season on their way to a Stanley Cup championship. After Tuesday night's game, the Blues play on Thursday in St. Louis and move to L.A. for two games. The last three games have yet to be determined. Former Royal shortstop Micah Viles hit a three-run homer and finished with a career-high five RBIs as the Indians broke out of their slump by beating the Royals in the nightcap of a doubleheader on Sunday. The game was a score of 10-3. However, the Royals were able to win the first game on Sunday afternoon. The score, 9-0. That's the day in sports for the Dawkins Broadcast Group. I'm Fred Dawkins, Jr. Thanks a lot, Fred Jr. Looking at our forecast for the rest of this evening, we're going to be seeing a nice evening here in southeast Missouri. Mostly sunny skies at 7 p.m., 74 degrees. By 9 p.m., clear skies 70 and 66 and clear skies at midnight. That does it for 18 Eyewitness News. For the latest weather, news, and sports 24 hours a day, go to our website, kdkz18.com. News Watch is next. We'll see you back here tonight at 10 o'clock. When you see news happening in your area, let us know about it. You can call our news department at 573-701-9590 or email us at news at dawkinsbroadcastgroup.com. Coming up tonight on KDKZ Channel 18.